Thank you. So this is my first time meeting you. And how's it going here today? It's great. Feeling some resonance with it? Very much Did so. Did your question evolve since you wrote it on the page? Just a little bit. <laughs> because, of course, we're all getting the messages to our personal questions. Yes. Just by hearing this all. Yes. So before it started, I thought, well, I could ask about if I'm doing the work to fulfill my life purpose, to be of service, if, am I moving forward in that? That's a question I had. Yes, but there's something in there that we want to talk about even more than the bigger question, which is what is of service? Because we have a new definition of it today that we've never had before as a result of what we were talking about here today. You want to know what being of service is? It's, it's having your vacuum cleaner plugged in. It's, it's being plugged into the source so that source who is flowing to you is being received enough by you. In other words, the influence of source is resonating with you. That's what service is. And that's the only thing that service is. Source is always of service to you. And think about why. When you have negative emotion, the reason you feel negative emotion is because you're having a thought and your inner being won't join you. That's service. That's staying in resonance with who you really are and what you really want so that if you want to feel good, you've got to find vibrational resonance with that. That's service. Humans think that service is really hearing you in your struggle, being motivated to try to help you from the place of utter disconnection. That's what most people think service is. I will suffer enough that I will serve you. And we say, no, you won't. You'll just suffer and need more service from somebody who's still in alignment. So that's what that question that's was about. Is, yeah. And um, the career that I, I am in is of service. So that's kind of, I wanted to just get that out and throw it away. Um, I, I wondered if you had any, a message from me. Does yeah, don't throw anything away. Oh, I, I mean, not throw away. That's a little strong to what say. What do you mean, though? No? Meaning that, I guess... I know I'm living my purpose. I know that I'm of service. So I don't have to contemplate that anymore. I really do know that. I know that. So that I, I'm so, manifesting that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really fun when you know it even before you manifest it. That's when this really starts going and blowing for you. When you know you're hooked in, and even though there's not a manifestation that's happening right now, this red hot minute, you still know. Yeah. Esther loves manifestations. You all do. But you got to love what it feels like on your way to one too that feeling of anticipation that feeling of absolute knowing with no evidence oh that's the best there is that feeling of absolute knowing and no evidence and people say why are you so happy and you say I can't explain it to you good things are coming to me how do you know I just know well you're dumb I know <laughs> and I don't care I don't need evidence I don't need tangible evidence I've got vibrational evidence I've got emotional evidence. I feel high and happy. Why? I don't know. Because good things are coming, because I'm in alignment. Yeah. And like most people, I go in and out of that. Uh, as a whole, I know I've done a lot of work, and I'm... I... Well, that's what you're wanting to sharpen up here. That's what mastery is. Mastery is really being aware when you're not there, that you could be there if you tried a little, that you could be there if you just focus a little. That you could apply what you know with a little more deliberateness. And the more you do it, the better it gets, and the better it gets. The more you know it, the more you know it, the more you do it, and the more you do it, the better it gets until people look at you and they just hate you. <laughs> because your life is so easy, and you're so happy, and you don't need evidence, but you've got it all around you. And they say, oh, you keep saying you don't need any evidence, but look at that. New house, new car, new love, new money, new thing. You say, yeah, it just seems to follow my happiness. Yeah. So this makes me think about, and I have a tendency to be very hard on myself. Well, stop it. I know. <laughs> don't give yourself permission to be that. You just confess to us. We don't want that kind of confession. That was my precursor to say, meditating as often as I do, is that enough? Doing such and such, is that enough to... Are you happy all the time? No. Then it's not enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next. So if I so, 
So if I sit a little longer, I'll, I'll, uh, there'll be a day when I'm happy Not all longer, the time. but more consistent. And more consistent understanding what you're doing. Don't sit, like our friend was sort of describing, trying to receive a message before you're ready. Sit with the intention of quieting your mind. Sit with the intention of just letting go of thought. Sit with the intention of allowing, in the absence of resistance, your vibration to rise and resonance to happen and then ideas to begin flowing. Understand what meditation is. Meditation is the way you let your inner being teach you alignment. That's what meditation is. Your inner being is always there. And you're not always there. But when you meditate, you could always be there. So my ultimate question was, is there any message for me personally? Yeah. Um, Meditate. Meditate. <laughs> Every day for 15 or 20 minutes. And in that 15 minutes, you don't feel that you've quieted your mind. Don't stay longer because now you're just having a battle with yourself. Get on with your day and do it again tomorrow. And eventually, you will find that quieted place. You'll know it because you'll feel different. You'll feel detachment. You'll know. You'll just feel well-being. You'll just feel yourself wrapped round with all of this energy. I do um, somatic uh, meditation, which is really going into the body and sort of breathing and expanding in parts rather than, the, not rather than, but blanking out. Well, the reason that we encourage the releasing of thought is because your inner being knows exactly where you are in relationship to everything and will offer the influence to your body. Sometimes people get so involved in meditative processes that their minds are so active, they never really accomplish alignment with their inner being. They just accomplish alignment with the book they're reading. We want you to accomplish alignment with your source, who's real time, in real now, offering you whatever you're asking for. Whatever you're asking for in your vortex, whatever your cells are asking for in your vortex. So, I've unconsciously dropped, pulled in um, the life that I have today, which is, you know, 56, no children. Uh, unconsciously? Well, because if in the, the thought, the f fact that we manifest what we truly want, you know, where I have said all my life I've wanted to be a mother, and I've made decisions and taken action that did not manifest that. But you've also said you, that you want to be of service, and it's like the same thing comes from the same place. You see what we're getting at? A desire to be nurturing, to be uplifting, to be of value. And so sometimes you are speaking more literally than you really intend. So why is that? <laughs> that I do that? For all of the reasons that we've been talking about here today, it starts with not knowing that you are more than you are. Not knowing that there is another part of you that you have a relationship with and that that relationship is what your emotional basis is about. And so a lot of people are there. Most people, in fact, are trying to guide themselves based upon what others think or what others have decided for them. But when you understand that that part of you exists and you understand that you had long-term intentions even before you came into this physical body and that you've been amending them and adding to them and that there is something that you really want and that your inner being really knows about so that your singular quest becomes now because you've already asked and it's already been given to get yourself into the receptive mode where you can begin to receive the impulses then all of these questions become irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we are afraid of becoming the, a very powerful self? I can personally attest to that. I, I have a fear about well, being a very powerful woman. Well, we don't believe you. We think that's just things you're making up because you don't think you are. And so you're just explaining why you're not what you really want to be by saying, I guess I don't think I really wanted to be it. There's a part of me that believes I am. We want to, yeah. we want to ask you some questions. Okay. Because to be a really powerful woman which is a woman who is of service, which means a woman who is under the influence of source, which means a woman who is influencing in connection with source. In order to be that powerful woman, these are the things that you find along the way in that. You feel joy. Do you want joy? Yes. Then you want to be a powerful woman. Do you like clarity? Yes. Then you want to be a powerful woman. Do you like insight into things? Then you want to be a powerful woman. So can you see how... That's just stuff you've been making up. Maybe you heard it somewhere, but none of it rings true, does it? 
I don't know, I followed you. You mean all that you just said? Yes, it rings no, true. None of that not being a powerful woman because I don't want to be. No, it's almost like bird, bird. I just get distracted from my mission, my, um, this other voice that's, and all the physical actions and things I've done to produce who I am but today. But here's the thing that we want you to hear. You heard a whole lot here today, and we acknowledge that you heard it. So that all of these things that you are saying are irrelevant given what you now know. But you're still saying them because you've got the habit of saying them. You've decided that that's who you are, but that's not who your inner being knows that you are. And right now, that's not who you know that you are. So our encouragement is to no longer practice that old defeating, powerless conversation. Think how powerless the words are that I'm afraid of my own power. Have you ever heard any more powerless words than I'm afraid to be powerful? It is completely illogical. And you want to know why you do it? Because you have decided that others don't like powerful women. And you don't want to upset them. And that's because you and almost everybody else, you're catering to what they think instead of to what you think. You're not keenly aware of your guidance system. And so you're not listening for your guidance system. And that's why you call it unconscious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You say. Yeah. But now, feel how different things feel now, just because of the resonance that you've been feeling as a result of the conversation here in this room, and most specifically the conversation right here and now. You are a powerful woman. When you think otherwise, you've unplugged your vacuum. You've disconnected. And then that feeling of powerlessness is your indication that you're right now out of your power. Well, of course, if you keep making your definitions of who you are when you're not in your power, you could come to the conclusion that I'm not powerful. But that's not even true of you because often you connect and you know that you are in your power, in your influence, in your energy, you see. So we say often that we feel it so strong that Esther often translates it as shouting Stop it. Stop arguing for your limitations because we felt you come with us and then you repeated an old thing that you don't even right now feel. It's just something that you're used to saying. We don't know where you're getting your gratification from that because really, do you know anybody? Have you ever entered a conversation, you're meeting someone new or, and you sit down and they say, how are you? And you say, I'm good, but I'm powerless. <laughs> I don't know why. I've just never let myself have my power. I thought it was meaningful to our relationship because have you ever said that to anyone? Or can you imagine someone saying that to you? If someone said to you, so you're sitting over lunch and you look across the table and you say, what's up? And they say, I feel powerless. What would your impulse be? I feel powerless. Wouldn't you want to say, well, you're not powerless. You might be pinching it off, but you're not powerless. Would you say, oh, good, I'm powerless too. <laughs> Let's join groups. Because if we get enough powerless people together, we'll have power. <laughs> if we can find enough of us that are disconnected from source energy, we'll join together in groups and we'll have the power. Yeah, you'll have the power for mediocrity. You'll have the power for yucky things that don't feel good. You'll have the power for dismal conversations and miserable life experience. But that's not power. Power is joy. Power is love. Power is appreciation. Power is knowing. Power is clarity. Power is the universal energy that creates worlds flowing through your fingertips. So you say, I'd like some of that. And the universe says, there you go. And you say, I did that because I have power. Yeah. Anything you want. And so what you're getting on a daily basis is just how much power you think you have. How much that you're allowing yourself to have. Sometimes you don't allow it because other people have told you you're not worthy. Sometimes you don't allow it because you yourself don't or you feel like you're not prepared. You make up all kinds of reasons for not knowing that you can have it if you want. But if you could just catch the spirit of being ready to be ready to be ready and that it will just continue to unfold in pleasing ways for you and that no one is keeping score except you and your scorekeeping is not good for you, just keep score of how happy you are and watch what happens. I was way happier today than I was yesterday. Ooh, I had so many happy moments today. Start keeping track of things that really feel happy, the moments of true happiness, and then watch how 
things just start shaping up for you. 